This week on To The Contrary, the newest Build Back Better bill does not include paid family leave. But is there still enough in it to satisfy progressives? Then, walkouts, protests, counter protests over comedian Dave Chappelle's Netflix special that some say lambasted transgender Americans. Hello, I'm Bonnie Urbe. Welcome to To the Contrary, a discussion of news and social trends from diverse perspectives. Up first, what's in, what's out, and who is paying for it? Before leaving for the G20 summit in Rome, President Biden laid out his framework for a $1.7 trillion human infrastructure bill, scaled way back from the original $3.5 $3.5 trillion. The bill includes money for universal pre-K, a limit on child care costs for certain families, elder care, and an expanded child tax credit, climate provisions, and a number of other items. What it doesn't include is a long-standing proposal to create a federal paid family and medical leave system and free community college. Joining me today are D.C. Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton, Heritage Foundation Senior Advisor Genevieve Wood, the Amsterdam News' Sam Bennett, and Renewed Democracy Initiative's Rena Shah. First question to D.C. Delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton. Eleanor, when the climate provisions were first taken out, the administration kept saying, but wait a minute, there's other money hidden in there for climate change. So um, is is it the same in this case? Is there still gonna be money in the bill for paid family and medical leave? Paid leave is out. Uh, That's a real shame. Climate change has been pared down so that it isn't doing us much good. That's the one provision I consider most important and we're still working on it. Uh, it's got to it's got to plus up in order to do us any good. Is this all? Who wants to jump in? Is this all because of Senators Manchin and uh, Cinema? Precisely, uh, and particularly Cinema, who uh, is cutting the bill left and right. I mean, I don't know what good it does to have two Democrats. Yeah, I guess it's better than having two Republicans. And we're in a 50-50 uh, Senate. That's the hang up. All right. Uh, your thoughts. Uh, go ahead, Genevieve. Well, I would say it, it. Yes, the senators you just talked about are part of the issue, but that's because a lot of their constituents and a lot of the American people think this bill cost way too much. They are very concerned that it's not just going to be cost in Washington, but that those costs are going to end up being put on them. I know we've heard a lot of people talk about only rich people will pay this, uh, but we've been through that enough for most Americans to know that's not the way it usually ends up working out. And when people see the kind of things they're seeing at their gas pump right now, when they see the prices on food and grocery stores uh, and the fact that some of the shelves are empty, I think they're very concerned about this trillion dollar package. And I think that's why you see Cinnamon Mansion doing what they're doing. All right. Your thoughts, Sam? Well, um, I must admit, I, I had the honor of assisting Cinema when she was running in numerous of her races when I was at the helm of Women's Campaign Fund. And I have to say, I'm disappointed. Um, this is a time for us to invest. I love the way it's positioned, it's human infrastructure. We trail behind every other rich nation in so many of these important supports for our citizens, including paid leave. Other nations with far smaller economies, far uh, less uh, wealth per per citizen, um, have passed and and enacted this legislation ages ago, including most recently climate change. I find this all very disappointing. You know, I have heard this over and over again, and I don't have time, unfortunately, to 
look into it myself, but is it true, Rena, that countries like Costa Rica or South Africa, which are really impoverished, have paid family leave for their citizens and we don't? Countries around the world recognize what it takes to build stronger, more efficient, better society. Somehow we don't. We are lagging in paid leave, why? Because our elected representatives refuse to do the bare minimum to strengthen the American family. Now, having made my career on the right, I can say that there are many opponents to paid leave from the federal level, which will say, this shouldn't be a federal thing. I've been at state house tables for years, the past seven years, and I have a five-year-old at home. <clears throat> Seven years I've sat with legislators in state houses like the one in Virginia where I live. We've talked about small business tax incentives. We've talked about various paths to do this. This has not been possible. There's been no political will or courage. And suburban women like me will be so angry, I believe, in the lead up to 2022. Because this is why I gave my vote to Democrats. After the nightmare that was the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic, the lockdowns that ensued, there are suburban women who have had enough. We understand to make society better, you can strengthen the American family by making it possible for us to spend more time with our babies, find ways to decrease okay, the amount but, spent but on you child of all, You of all people understand that the Democrats were only able to capture the Senate by the slimmest of majorities, 50-50, that they have two people two Demo who call themselves Democrats, but are acting way more like Republicans at this point in time. So, so you're going to, your you suburban moms are going to vote for a Trump clone like Glenn Youngkin running in Virginia? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. This is where it gets dicey because look, that's a different story. I know that everybody wants to say it's a bellwether for 2022, but this is very separate. And I'm on team McAuliffe because I don't believe in the election integrity garbage that Glenn Youngkin is selling. He's a moderate Republican who I largely agree with on most of his policies, but the way he runs around town talking about election integrity is absolute malarkey. And I think where we are at, Bonnie, the Democrats owed it to the American family. And I think to say that it's, it's that this would have endangered their population popularity. This is terrible. Paid leave is something we should be talking about doing because it makes sense. It just makes sense. We don't live in multi-generational households anymore. There are single mothers out there doing it and doing it to a point of exhaustion. What are we doing to our fellow Americans? P paid leave is palatable across the country, coast to coast. You ask people, do you want people to pay their fair share of taxes? Of course. Do you want to strengthen the American family by making it possible for mothers to enter the workforce again? American women can drive the American okay. economic uh, engine right. if we actually have support to go back into the workforce. Back in here about the implications for all of this for the 2022 elections. As, um, as Rena just said, now she was talking about what's happening right now, but a lot of people are putting that on what's going to send, what's going to propel voters to the voting booths in, in the uh, congressional election a third of the Senate, all of the House uh, next year. So will the Democrats be blamed for a sluggish economy, a um, inflation, uh, you know, uh, delays at the ports, et cetera, et cetera, all these awful things that are happening to the economy. And then on top of that, no payoff. Because we control the House and Senate and the White House, we're certainly going to be blamed. And in the off year after you have that kind of majority, you usually lose seats. Uh, that's why it's so important that these two bills get passed. The infrastructure bill and the Build Back Better bill, that could rescue Democrats from even further losses. And we are so close now. I, I would say we're 99% of the way because Democrats recognize that this is it. President is now uh, abroad, uh, but before he left, he all but sold this up. I have just come back uh, as I speak from a Democratic, uh, uh, from, from a Democratic uh, uh, conference where the president appeared before he was about to go abroad. 
And I think we are there. And if we're not there, we are toast. And do you think anybody that the um, that Democratic voters will give the Democrats in Congress credit for doing something for them? They won't if we don't pass this bill. No, but I'm saying even if you pass this bill, Sam, are Democratic voters going to think that it's enough? Or are they just going to say, eh, so what? I didn't get my paid family leave. Well, to give uh, Rena and Genevieve's party some credit, uh, in, in my years of being a party chair, we had to work a lot harder as Democrats to get our voters to the polls, educate our voters. This becomes an education issue, Bonnie, for the Triple C, for the DNC, to make sure that our candidates and the party itself gets credit for job well done. Um, and again, just to give a nod to the Republicans, their voters uh, tend to be a little more disciplined um, and don't need quite as much push to the polls and in information. But I think that's required here, Bonnie. Bonnie, can I just, taking Please. this away from the political side of this for a second, I mean, if we're real, and let's talk about paid family leave, I'm not opposed to that for the, the problem here is what often happens. Much of what was in this bill would have helped upper middle class and middle class working women, but not lower wage workers. We were going to be paying corporations to give people paid family leave. Many of these corporations and companies already do paid family leave. That was basically going to be corporate welfare for them. If we really want to help the women who need this the most and who are working for small businesses and companies that aren't already offering paid family leave, we should make this much more targeted. But, that, but they didn't go about it the smart way. And at the end of the day, it was going to be people working for larger companies that were going to get more of this. It's just the government was going to pay for it as opposed to the businesses. And the very low wage folks, many of which are single moms, were not going to get this out of the Democratic is, bill. Is that so at the end of the day, if we want to be smart about paid well, family leave, let's not be political. Let's be well, smart okay. from a policy perspective. But is that is that correct? And if so, no. uh, why was it positioned that way? Because they want to sell it to everybody. I mean, the Congressional Budget Office said that if you had passed the bill as it was now, and the money they were asking for for paid family leave, it would have only covered maybe 40 percent of the amount of paid family leave women would have requested. So it didn't even pay for itself. And again, it wasn't targeted. We already have companies okay, but doing a lot of this. Why are we going to pay them to do more of it? Let Eleanor, is that this. accurate that it was going to corporations, not individuals? Uh, the paid family leave uh, was going to go to individuals and not enough individuals. At the, at the it was going to companies who would then pass it through to individuals. So we were going to pay companies to pass it on to their employees. Well, that's right. And in many cases, but many of these cases that are delegate of these companies were already doing that. So if it, okay. there's no need to pay them. We should be so should they be could expand. What, what's wrong them. with them expanding the number of weeks they give okay. of yeah. paid family leave? Well, because you. because Bonnie, at the end of the day, you run out of other people's money. That's why. And if we really want to be helping people, then you got to say we've got a limited amount of money. How do we make the best use of this? But in this case, the Democrats, and not just on paid family leave, on a lot of these things, I think they have overreached, and therefore they they came up with a bill that was way way too expensive. Now they're trying to draw it back, but the branding's already out there, which was you overreached. You can take it to the bank and we're going to we're going to get a slim down bill, but that slim down bill will make it possible for Democrats to run in 2022 and it will it will make it possible for the president to give a plus that he needs now with his rating so low. I think it's mischaracterizing um, this bill to call it an overreach. I would say it's ambitious and ambitious in all the right ways because we are so far behind other rich nations and other other nations like Costa Rica, to your point, Bonnie. So it's not overreach, it's ambition and it's long overdue. From compromise to controversial comedy, Dave Chappelle can't make a move these days, it seems, without igniting controversy. His latest Netflix special called The Closer has infuriated the LGBTQ community for several reasons. He stated that gender is a fact in strict opposition to the belief that people are non-binary or somewhere in between male and female. He compared transgender women to white people wearing blackface or pretending to be something they are not. 
He defended Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling for comments she made deemed anti-trans. Despite online and in-person protests calling for the special to be taken off Netflix, CEO Ted Sarandis says Chappelle has the protection of the First Amendment, as does any other artist or comedian. So, Rena Shah, you're very supportive of the LGBT community. Tell me why, and I don't mean to stir controversy here, I just want to know why LGBTQ people got so upset over at least one of these comments stating that gender is a fact. Well, it's obvious to me why they are up in arms about it, because it's denying who they are as people on its very face. And so as somebody who is a supporter of the LGBTQ community, I really believe that this is tough. This is a tough issue to talk about. It's going to be difficult to have this debate in the public square because you're going to have people take extreme sides. But this is comedy. But don't to you me. think, I mean, <clears throat> LGBTQ people make up about 10%, the most generous estimates, 10% of the population. Um, and, and that's one And, and most fact. other Americans would say, I'm a woman or I'm a man, wouldn't they? Absolutely. But we also have to understand that as Americans, we have to be accepting. Uh, I don't want anybody to walk out into the street and be the victim of a hate crime literally because somebody's walking around with this sense of that they just don't deserve to be a full person in society. Equality means having these tough conversations. But where I sort of part ways with the community here, and, and this is tough because I'm not transphobic in any way. It's just that to me, this is comedy. And you can watch it or you cannot watch it. But if we cancel it, what are we doing? We're not even having the debate. And it's a private corporation. It's their right to do what they want to do. Put it out. But don't. I started watching it with my husband. We were curious. I don't find Dave Chappelle funny. I never actually have for years and years. So I just don't watch his stuff. My husband continued to watch it. I watched it. I, I knowing all the headlines around it, I watched it. I considered it. And I was like, eh, I'm not into it. So I went upstairs and he continued to watch it. But that's just it. Is that, yes, it feels to people that this is completely um, targeted harassment of some sort. But living in a free and open and just society means that we can't cancel the things that don't sound right to us. If I went out there and was against every single thing that denied me as a everything I can and can't change about myself, right? then what kind of society would we have? We can't cushion our children and ourselves from these inconvenient truths, it feels like. Okay, I want to jump to Genevieve now, your thought. I mean, I I think she made a lot of the right comments. I mean, the fact is people can watch this, not watch it. I mean, I think back at things, let's go way back, All in the Family, the Jeffersons. Okay, people said stuff on those shows that, you know, people found controversial, but they were still funny. And the reality is you weren't forced to watch those. You didn't have to watch those. You don't have to do the advertising or support the advertisers that that support them. I mean, look, are we going to have a First Amendment or not? I mean, are people going to be able to say what they believe or make comments that offend others or not? And, you know, we let people think, who are running, think for, we let Dave, people who wait, are running wait, wait, for office ask, say these things, Let me ask Bonnie. you a question, Genevieve. Do you think Dave Chappelle saying gender is a fact is going to result in uh, maltreatment, even beatings or murders of transgender individuals? I don't think so. But Bonnie, look, here's the reality. I believe gender is a fact. Okay, I'm saying that right here. And there are a lot of Americans who believe gender is a fact. Does that mean that I think people who don't think that or are living differently than that should be uh, marginalized or beaten? Of course not. But the idea that we all have to believe the exact same way is just ridiculous and that we can't state what we believe. I mean, that's how this country, that's one of the reasons it was founded was people can believe what they want to believe without persecuting others. And when we get in this cancel culture, you're basically going to be persecuting everybody eventually because everybody's going to have a different opinion than someone else about important things at different times in their life. And if you're saying we can't state those, then I, I don't know what kind of, the whole culture is going to eventually be canceled. Your Turn thought, it off if you don't want to watch it. Let's stop making such okay. a big deal out of everything. Okay, now let <laughs> Eleanor, okay, I've you said are enough. one of Sorry. the most LGBTQ friendly members of Congress. Uh, DC is very democratic. 
and has a very large and active gay community. Your thoughts on all this? And Dave Chappelle went to the Duke Ellington School of the Arts right there in the District of Columbia. But Bonnie, uh, I represented before the Supreme Court racists, people with whom I obviously disagree. So when it comes to saying whatever you want to say, it's pretty hard for me to say that uh, Dave Chappelle should be in any way shut out. Uh, his views are controversial. He is, after all, a comet, for goodness sake. There are more controversial views from people who are not in the entertainment sphere. So I say, Dave Chappelle, take the criticism. He would meet with the LBGQ community and others who have taken offense. That's a good thing, but he's also said he won't change what he is doing. And that too is how the arts. Well, at first he said he wouldn't meet with the, with the, the Netflix employees who are LGBTQ. Now he says he will, but he set down some rules for it. Uh, do you think, uh, Sam, that that will, uh, if, if he has this meeting, that that will shut down the controversy or will it continue? Well, I don't know. We want to see the controversy shut down. I think that the controversy is the point. Um, I'm a huge Dave Chappelle. He's a genius. He's won more awards than you can count. He's the Mark Twain, some would argue, of our generation. Um, I think what's sort of elicited this response. But, but also, let me just say, as someone sure. who I'm not a fan, I watched the I watched the the closer, the controversial uh, yeah. episode, although it was. It was things that he said over the years that also got him in trouble. But yeah. in this one, I think in an hour, an hour and a half, I, I don't even recall. Um, it was extremely boring for well, about in, 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 or I, three quarters of the time. I, I, a I, couple I really, of times and I didn't measure it, maybe four or five. He had hysterically funny lines. And the rest of it was a lot of rambling and a lot of stuff that, he wasn't even trying to be fun. Well, I'm, I'm sure you respect, respect my right to love Dave Chappelle. Um, but um, bottom line, I think the point here, though, is, and um, just as I always call anybody on using sexist terminology in everyday life, right? The, challenge, the, the danger here is normalizing that which is we, we, we all agree on is unacceptable, right? Whether you believe in transgender or not, I do. Um, I believe in gender fluidity. Um, my, you know, my 19 and 17 year old nieces and nephews, that generation are all about gender fluidity. But bottom line, I think the idea is we don't wanna normalize what essentially at its extreme becomes, could become a hate crime, let's say, could be hateful and destructive. So I think the issue here is, sure, there should be controversy. Sure, comedians like Dave Chappelle should have free right speech. But we in society have to make it clear this is not acceptable in so much as it normalizes a particular view. And the violence- It's not acceptable to say gender is a fact. What I'm saying is there's a continuum. And one could believe or not believe that whether, and I don't, Freud didn't either, by the way, that you know, gender is fluid. But the bottom line is we have an obligation as a society to weigh in and say, this is not acceptable. So I, to be honest, I think the LGBTQ community is doing exactly the right thing. That doesn't mean Dave has to agree with them. It's good that he's meeting with them. I think that Netflix is doing the right thing by not cutting you know, Dave off by the knees. This is, what, this is the price we pay to live in a free society with First Amendment rights. All right, but let's also say, I mean, Dave Chappelle is probably about 10 times as famous now as he was before this controversy erupted. So is this something that he's doing to create publicity for himself? This has always been his strategy. This is what has put him on the map um, and, and part of his genius. Um, I don't think he's doing it disingenuously, honestly. I think he's doing it because he believes in it. But the bottom line is, I think the LGBT community is doing the right thing 
and we can weigh in on that. I think everyone in this situation is doing the right thing. We should have controversy because that is what leads to change. I remember being at the dinner table as a little girl. My mom was horrified. They were water hosing civil rights protesters on TV. And I grew up with hearing my mother's horror about that. And that is why I'm in women's advancement. That's why I work at Amsterdam News, the nation's oldest and most influential black newspaper. It shaped my life. So controversy is important for us to make sure that the right outcomes eventually happen in society. Thank you all. Let's continue the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please go to our PBS webpage, which is www.tothecontrary.org. And if you agree or think to the contrary, please join us again. Funding for To the Contrary provided by the E. Rhodes and Leona B. Carpenter Foundation, the Colcom Foundation, and the Charles A. Freoff Foundation. For a transcript or to see an online version of this episode of To the Contrary, please visit our PBS website at pbs.org forward slash to the contrary. PBS.